AMD recently announced their highly anticipated Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs, the actual next-gen CPUs everyone was waiting for. I wanted to talk about the specs and give you guys my thoughts on the CPUs. There are some important things I wanted to point out to you, so let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. The past few days have been quite eventful. As I'm sure most of you are aware, with CES taking place in Las Vegas, there's going to be a lot going on in the tech world. AMD recently held a conference where they showcased new products they'll be bringing to market in the consumer space such as new chips for their laptops, desktop CPUs, along with new tech for the data center. For this video, what I wanted to focus on was their announcement pertaining to their new Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs. These CPUs have been highly anticipated by PC gamers and enthusiasts ever since AMD had announced the original 7000 series lineup back in August last year. Ironically, the anticipation of these Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs was also a major contributor to the Zen 4 CPUs doing so poorly in sales. Sure, there were other reasons such as expensive motherboards, DDR5 RAM pricing, AM4 affordability, the 5800X3D, and competition from Intel. But I know many people who were interested in the 7000 series held out because they saw the kinds of performance uplifts the Vcash tech provided to Zen 3 and thought they might might as well wait for AMD to roll out Zen 4 with this 3D cache tech. So AMD announced three SKUs this time around instead of just one, which I think is a good move as I know a lot of people were displeased when AMD had only announced a 5800X3D last year and not a 5950X3D to go along with it. What's interesting here is that both the Ryzen 9 7950X3D and the Ryzen 9 7900X3D also have the same exact boost clocks as their non-3D counterparts, whereas the 8-core 7800X3D has a reduction of 400 megahertz compared to the 7700 Along with that, these processors do have lower base clocks as well, but it's nothing too crazy, and what matters here the most are the boost clocks. What's also noteworthy is that even for the CPUs that have two CCDs, so those being your Ryzen 9 parts, they only have the extra 64 megabytes of SRAM stacked on top of one CCD, whereas the other CCD has been left untouched. This is why the Ryzen 9 CPUs have the ability to maintain the same boost clocks as the non-3D parts, because just like what we saw with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, having that extra SRAM stacked on top reduces your boost clocks considerably, and I'm not sure what the exact reasoning for it is, but I think it has to do with thermals. So that's why the Ryzen 7 7800X3D has its clock speeds reduced, as it only has one CCD with the SRAM stacked on top. This creates a pretty interesting situation for the dual CCD parts, because now AMD is going to have to work with Microsoft in optimizing Windows Scheduler to ensure that workloads that benefit from the extra pool of cache have the threads loaded onto the 3D CCD, whereas lower threaded or bursty workloads, which would benefit from the higher clock speeds, would target the non-3D CCD. Gordon Ong from PC World did an interview recently with AMD's Scott Stankard, who explained that they have worked with Microsoft and game developers to help optimize the scheduler so that it targets the right CCD, but this is easier said than done, and given the fact that we've seen so much hardware released these days that doesn't have its bugs ironed out by release, we'll probably be seeing reviewers and testers running into problems where the game might not be targeting the right CCD. I do recall there being some situations where the 7700X was faster than the 7950X and 7900X because it only has one CCD. When information and data is passed along from one CC to the next, it does incur a latency penalty and that can degrade gaming performance. This is crucial because there are games out there that benefit greatly from a large pool of cash, and there are also games that benefit from a higher single core boost. So how do you balance that? It's tough, and I don't believe that the Windows scheduler is smart enough to figure this out, at least not yet anyways. The other thing to consider here is that is Microsoft only going to be optimizing the scheduler for Windows 11, and are they just going to say, hey, if you want to take advantage of these dual CCD 3D vCache tech CPUs, then you're going to have to upgrade to Windows 11. So we'll have to see about that. Now, moving on, let's take a look at some benchmarks that AMD showed because this is what intrigued me the most. And if I'm to be frank with you guys, I'm not blown away by these numbers that they're showing off. I think that these Zen 4 3D CPUs may not be offering the performance uplift that everyone was expecting or that AMD isn't marketing these CPUs right. 
We won't know for sure until they're in the hands of reviewers, and we've seen a benchmark suite of like 20 plus games, but reviews pertaining to these chips will be content that you definitely want to keep your eye out for. What's also quite peculiar is that in the official slides AMD had sent over to tech outlets, the games they used in the chart comparing the 7800X 3D to the 5800X 3D were different than the games they had showed during the live stream. In the slide they sent out to reviewers, the list of games were esports titles, whereas the games shown in the live stream were triple A single player titles. In one of the slides, they used CSGO as a benchmark and showed a 23% uplift over the 5800X 3D, which I thought was an odd choice because CSGO is a game that showed it does not care about the extra cash at all and only cares about high single core performance, thus higher frequency is better. In Tech Power Up's review of the 7000 series, you can see how the 5800X 3D loses to the vanilla 5800X, and that's because the 5800X 3D has lower boost clocks than the 5800X. The other important thing I wanted to point out was that the 7700X in their benchmark, so this is the Zen 4 non-3D part, is already a whopping 39% faster than the 5800X 3D. In Hardware and Boxes review of the 7700X, he saw that it was 45% faster than a 5800X 3D, which means that in CSGO, the 7800X 3D is actually going to lose to a 7700X with no vCache, and that really shouldn't come as a surprise since this game clearly doesn't benefit from the extra cache, but then it just begs the question why AMD decided to include it in one of their charts. Hardware Unboxed showed two titles in their review, Factorio and Assetto Corsa, both of which had the 5800X 3D in a league of its own, which means that they're titles that clearly benefit from the large pool of cash, and they would have been better off including those titles instead. But hey, this is why it's great to have reviews from third-party independent media to validate claims and test the product in different ways than what the manufacturer didn't show. In the slide they presented during the stream, Cyberpunk 2077 was a game they included and it, here they showed a 10% improvement over the 5800X 3D. In Hardware Unboxed review of the 7700X, it's about 9% faster than the 5800X 3D. So again, what we're seeing here is just regular Zen 4 levels of performance. Another slide that they showed was for the 7950X 3D and that CPU was compared against Intel's flagship 13900K, which is another blazing fast CPU for gaming. In their chart, they showed a 24% lead for the 7950X 3D over the 13900K. Hardware Unboxed was the only reviewer who I saw had used a 4090 for the 13900K, and he saw that the 7950X was about 21% faster than the 13900K in Horizon Zero Dawn. So I hope you guys can see what I am seeing here. If these Zen 4 3D CPUs were offering large performance uplifts over their non-3D counterparts, then AMD would have shown direct comparisons to them, but they didn't. They showed comparisons against the last gen 5800X 3D and the 13900K, choosing titles which they already do well in. It doesn't really instill a lot of confidence, unlike last year where they showed the 5800X 3D going against a 5900X with double digit performance gains. Don't get me wrong, there will probably be some titles that will show an immense improvement where they will take advantage of the cache, but... I wouldn't expect huge gains across the board. I'm really looking forward to seeing reviews for these chips because now I'm curious. What we saw was pretty limited data so I'm not going to make any concrete judgments yet, but I feel like these CPUs aren't going to be that much faster on average than their Zen 4 non-3D counterparts. We'll find out for sure once we see a variety of games tested. And finally, I would talk about pricing, but AMD didn't share anything about that. All they said was that the CPUs would be available sometime in February 2023, but I mean that's a month from now, so I'm not sure why pricing info wasn't given out. I think it could be because they're still trying to maybe gauge the market in the meantime, Perhaps they didn't want to announce anything that could hurt the sales of their current 7000 lineup. Not that it really matters because those parts weren't even selling that well to begin with. They could also be waiting on what Intel will do for the 13900KS and see what they price that at. If I was AMD, what I would do is drop the prices of the existing Ryzen 7000 parts and then slot in these X3D parts at the same prices as what the original non-3D parts launched at. If they price them higher, then I can't see them charging more than like $50 per segment. So $449 for the 7800X3D, $599 for the 7900X3D, and then $749 for the 7950X3D. Anything higher than that, and I think these CPUs will be a tough sell. 
especially because not everyone will even see these kinds of performance uplifts unless they're gaming at 1080p with a 4090, so let's be real here. But that will do it for this one. I'm sure there will be some more info coming out as we get closer to the release date. In the meantime, I want to hear from you guys what you think about these 7000 X3D chips. Are you excited? Will this finally push you towards buying an AM5 motherboard? Let me know down below. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.